Hey, I'm Hunt, and this is Hunt on LSU, your channel for LSU Fighting Tiger football talk. Enjoy the video. We want you to leave a comment below, hit that like button, and subscribe right below the video. Enjoy. NFL Combine over the weekend in Indianapolis. Um, my relationship with the Combine is this. I am interested in the results of the Combine. I have no interest in watching the televised Combine. That... I think that's pretty fair and, and probably the case for a lot of people. I know there are football folks that just want to grind it. They want to be in there. Hester was talking about uh, his oldest, Jackson, loves sitting there watching the combine. He's locked in all weekend long. Shout out. That's awesome. Uh, I, I just I like to see the results when it's over and then kind of process that. And obviously the biggest story for LSU was Brian Thomas in his 40 time. Um. I knew Brian Thomas was fast. He took the top off of defenses for two years here in Baton Rouge. Um, I did not know he was that fast. If you would have asked me, what's Brian Thomas going to run? I would say, I would guess 4-4-5. Four, four, fast, certainly not, and especially at that size, to be 6-3 and 210-ish pounds. Um, I would say 4-4-5. Four, four, for him to run a 4-3-3, and for us to know what we know, I mean, that is potentially going to move him up a few picks in the draft because we know he's 6'3", and we know that he's got good football speed on the field because the tape says that, and we know he's been wildly productive. He led college football in touchdown catches last year with 17. Those things we, we know. I did not know 4-3-3 was in the tank. And so now when you take the knowns that we had entering this and you add this, this is the entire package. There may not be a more physically gifted wide receiver in this draft. I don't know what Malik Neighbors will run at Pro Day, but I know he's not going to be 6'3". I don't know what Marvin Harrison's going to run at his Pro Day. And he's got good size, but when you combine this 40 time with that frame... And that film, all of a sudden, it doesn't seem that wild for Brian Thomas to go 11th, 12th, 13th in the draft. It just takes one team. A lot of guys run fast at the combine. But you don't know if they can play. You just They're fast. Well, you can turn the tape on. Brian Thomas can play. That's obvious. And, you know, he goes out there and jumps 38 and a half inches, so... Knocking on 40's door with the vertical at 6'3". This was huge for Brian Thomas. Now, he didn't have that much room to go up because you're talking about a guy that was not going to get past the 35th pick in the draft. That was, And so, if you're potentially a... You know, Mason Smith has a lot of room to go up. Brian Thomas doesn't. There's only like 34 other spots you can move up. And he's not going to go you know, in the top five. But there's a lot of money associated with those spots. And so I think he did himself a ton of good at the combine. You know, Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas, I'm curious to watch these guys in the NFL. I asked Preston Guy this question last week when we had him on the show. And I said, you know, does, does, do Neighbors and Thomas belong in the discussion with some of the great duos that LSU's had in the modern era here? Go back to, you know, Michael Clayton and Devery Henderson. You got Early Doucette and Dwayne Bow. Obviously, Jarvis and Odell. Obviously, Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson. Kind of got you. You can't really say one without the other in some of those cases. Um, and these two guys, I think, are going to be remembered like that. And you just you go to the NFL, and Jarvis and Odell were so good in the NFL. And I think there's a chance that Brian Thomas and Malik Neighbors could be like that. I mean, we know what Jets and Chase have done. That's I don't know if they're going to be that good. But this is a special duo that we saw. And I think there was a time there where we were thinking so much about Malik about uh, Jaden Daniels that maybe we didn't give as much credence to the two guys that were out there making the plays down the field. And I was thrilled to see Brian Thomas do that at the, uh, at the Combine. I thought another guy who potentially may have helped himself a little bit over the weekend was Jordan Jefferson. Um, Jordan Jefferson, if, if you look at, he had 34 bench press reps, which was incredible. 
And if you look at the scores, and I don't know how they break these things down, but ESPN's doing them. There's obviously some method to the madness. And you're looking at a guy whose athleticism score was uh, third among defensive tackles. And total score was ninth among defensive tackles. So I thought a pretty good effort. Uh, Jordan Jefferson's got a lot of tape from West Virginia, not as much at LSU, although he did play a lot late. Um, and the tape's pretty good, but I thought he helped himself showing his strength uh, and showing some of the athleticism because he had a 31-inch vertical and an 8-8 eight, eight broad. Um, so I, I thought he was really good. I obviously would have loved to have him back for another year. would like to have Makai Wingo and Mason Smith back for another year as well. Um, but I thought a pretty good, uh, pretty good showing for Jordan Jefferson. Uh, Mason Smith was up at the combine as well. That's a guy that I'll be fascinated to see what happens for him in the draft. Um, from a testing perspective, he wasn't spectacular. Um, he was ranked the 15th defensive tackle. Uh, the athleticism score had him 8th among defensive tackles. Um, he had a little bit better broad jump than, uh, than Jordan Jefferson did. Shows a little bit of explosiveness, I think. The 45 flat, 501, don't really care that much. I think what it boils down to with Mason Smith is that nothing that he's done athletically translates to high pick. There's no production at LSU. There's no eye-popping scores at the Combine. And I don't think it's going to get significantly better at Pro Day. Really, what he's got going for him is that he is six foot five, he is three hundred and five pounds, and he does have thirty five inch arms. He's physically impressive, but there's no tape, and the combine numbers are just okay. And so the variance here, as I was just talking about, Brian Thomas doesn't have very much. Mason Smith got a ton. If you told me Mason Smith went in the seventh round. Would I be shocked? No. You told me Mason Smith went in the third round. Would I be shocked? No. I think it's probably closer to seventh than third. But the variance is so big there. And I was curious to see what his numbers would be. And they're pretty average across the board. Now, this is the Underwear Olympics. We know that. But you'd like to have some production and some tape to help you, and Mason Smith doesn't. So it feels like the combine might have been a little bit more important for him than it was for some other people. Than it was for, say, Malik Neighbors, who didn't really do anything. I don't know. Um, so that's just a couple of thoughts on the NFL scouting combine. Now, one, oh, Sorry, go ahead. Well, yeah, well, one, thing, one thing to note, uh, Mel Kuyper wrote an article today about his uh, best high, uh, best performers from the from the uh, combine that he noticed and Brian Thomas was one of the one of the names that he listed and he did also mention that it would be hard to see him going higher than 11 which is where he had him pre combine but it certainly cements his position as probably a top 15 pick yeah and that's that's fantastic that's i mean that story that arc is really exactly what you want on national signing day i poo national signing day well no the recruit the process leading up to national signing day um, but it's an in-state kid with a ton of talent that's rated four stars, who comes in, doesn't play a ton as a freshman, emerges as a starter as a sophomore, and then becomes a star as a junior, and then puts on this kind of performance and moves up to the top 15. That's that's the arc that you you hope for when every guy signs on the dotted line. And Brian Thomas... Uh, he lived up to yeah, it. Yeah, he, he kind of cemented... He can sit down at Pro Day if he wants, not just not do anything. Um, he's going to go catch for Jaden, I'm sure. Um, but there's just not... He's... he's that. You've got everything you need. You've got the tape. You've got the production. You've got the test scores. That's it uh, for Brian Thomas. So that's huge uh, for for him. Hey, thanks for watching Hunt on LSU. Before you get out of here, do us a couple of favors. Hit that like button, leave your comments below, and subscribe to the channel for all your fighting Tiger football talk. See you next time.